Hey everybody, it's Jillian. So yeah, I'm doing like a real quick lesson earlier just in my head or learning when I woke up this morning about odds and payout and betting and gambling and horse racing and how to bet, you know, with horse racing and all that stuff and the odds and all, I mean, when you're bringing in Investopedia, you're bringing in gambling, you're bringing in all these different things, there's definitely a connection. Now it's finding the connections is what the biggest, hardest thing is to find those connections and be able to tell a story as well as give you a different way of looking at the same thing. So, um, so yesterday I talked about on my Sunday live about 50% chance rates of life and death because you only have two chances. Hey, Ron, um, of life. If you, have, you, have, you know, if you flip a coin, heads or tails, you only have, you know, one chance out of two flips. Okay. So, I mean, that's because we only have life and death. We don't have any other, we don't have a third option. We don't have a 30% chance. If you have a 30% chance of living and dying, then those odds are really not for you. They're really against you. So we have a 50% chance rate of life and death now we have to understand indicators and time and all these different factors that contribute to then the end result. But we already see right now the end result of everything that we've been doing. It's an observable probability, which is obvious. You see the observable, observable probability of dying in our society because you just look around you and you look at all the different protocols, all the different things that are, are out there, the cures, the medicines, the procedures, and you already see the outcome. Okay. So it's not like it's rocket science to see the observable probability of dying in our society, but you have to understand how that, that comes to be. You have to understand how then where indefinite life comes into play. Okay. And so I'm just looking at, and I, I'm looking at horse racing and gambling, true odds versus payout odds. And I'm trying to understand because gambling in horse racing is no different than gambling with your life and with all the procedures that are out there. I mean, you have public perception, you have, you know, observable science, you know, subjective probability, observable probability of all these different statistics and all of these things. And you have to bring them all together and figure out, okay, if you understand gambling in one area of like horse racing and, and casinos, understand how the, the odds are stacked against you in a house, like well, in, you know, in a casino, then you'll see no different than the odds are stacked against you when it comes to the general population who could determine the conditions. Because remember, people are like lemmings. They follow each other. So popular things are, are, are popular for a reason because remember our psychology of our society is about easy money, easy life, and then go out with a bang. So that's already, you know, we already can see the observable probability of death in our society. You just look at everybody around you. They're trying to go for the shortest cuts, shortcuts, all that stuff. Right? So when, when, um, when I'm looking at the whole thing with the vaccine campaign, and with the medical establishment and that how you know vaccines in third world countries have dec decreased the infant mortality we're seeing okay science obviously has a place they create life and they can kind of continue life for a certain amount of time and then there's all these factors to determine how long but we're not going to go there too much but we already see that we've increased the odds of life with medical science based upon the substantiation in the stats as well as you see you know emerging countries or thorough countries starting to now become more advanced in their just in their society because we keep giving people the chance of life they have to build a society to then support the life okay so that's why you see kenya is probably more advanced than liberia because of the fact that we have come in with western medicine and given babies that wouldn't have a chance a chance that life and then you have to have a society and an infrastructure to support that life and that's why we're coming in with you know with 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 chains or like you know um corporation chains and uh a government a sort of kind of government a centralized system a justice system all this stuff to then help support the life that we are creating that otherwise wouldn't be here and then helping the society figure out how to support the diverse society. Okay. So that's kind of, you know, I, I talked about yesterday, babies and jilly juice, and then the 50% chance rate of life and death. 
when you flip a coin, you have 50% chance rate to get to get heads or tails. Heads is life, but tails is death. But then when I looked up at actually the, the probability around even a 50% chance, it's not exactly a science like a 50% chance of heads or tails because there is physics that are involved, okay? When I looked up, when I was Googling like 50% chance rate of life or 50% chance rate of anything, when you have a one to two odd type of thing, they're like, hey, but it's also about how you flip the coin, the physics, all everything, you know? And I'm just like, okay, so there's a lot more. So you actually, it's not really a 50% chance rate, which is true because it has to do with the person flipping the coin, the physics around it, the whole situation that is supporting the coin flip toss, okay? No different than when you are in Liberia and you're vaccinating all these mothers and fathers and all this stuff. And yeah, you're seeing a decline in infant mortality rates, but there's still all these different factors that determine whether or not a baby will survive. But we won't even go, because that's too much detail, because then you have to go in and figure out that, you know, the, the genetics of the mother, the father, and all of their history, and their food, and the lifestyle, and the geography. I mean, there's so many factors. But no matter what, it's still life or death. You still have the two chances of life and death. Now, what determines you live or to die is based upon, predicated upon so many factors. And that's why and that's why it's very hard to say correlation equals causation. That's why I got away from the anti-vax world and away from all of the, the, the activists because they're making correlation equals causation when there's so many factors that determine people's life and death scenarios, okay? But here's the thing. Question R. So at conception and at birth, you have, this is what I said yesterday, you have 50% chance rate of, of, a, of your baby will live or die, but it's probably not 50% chance because there's so many different factors that determine the life and the death, okay? Pain is an indicator, but you still only have, to, you still only have two options, life or death, but what determines that, that percentage may not be exactly, but there's still the outcome of life and death because there's no, there's no third option, okay? But pain is an indicator of imminent life or imminent death. And it's predicated upon geography, socioeconomic status, weather, food, and lifestyle. Okay. And uh, let's see. Belief systems impacting the genetics of the mother and the father as well as their offspring. So, um, so then, yeah. So then, I, so then I'm looking at, okay. Conception of birth, 50%, okay, pain is the end of imminent life and imminent death, okay. And, but see, pain can be characterized as someone about to die because when somebody is on morphine but it doesn't work and they're at end of life and they're in hospice, then, yeah, that is an indicator that death is imminent. But then when somebody is being created at conception, the virgin experiences pain from the vector, which is the male, uh, bearing a baby is painful. Don't, I don't care who you are. It, there's pain somewhere, the morning sickness, all that stuff. Even if you don't get morning sickness, just bearing the baby and having to deal with it naturally or in a hospital using epidurals, no matter what the, the beginning of life into this world outside of the womb is a painful experience, but pain equals life. No different than when you're on the jelly juice and you're changing your environment and you're healing and strengthen the weaknesses that you have, it's painful. But then also when you're dying and the body is trying to survive and live and you won't let it, it will be painful at the end of your life because you're not giving it what it needs. So it keeps continuing trying to live until there's nothing left, okay? So pain is the indicator of imminent life as well as imminent death, okay? And then I'm talking about the odds and probability of religious and the human body. Holy crap. This is where you have to think of so many freaking things, and it and it, I'm telling you, it boggled my mind trying to figure out how do I determine probability and and odds, and then I'm looking at true odds versus payout odds, and it has to do with gambling. But then you know, gambling and life and minerals and payouts is all connected. You just have to know what word represents another word in another context. All the contexts are the same stuff, but the context is what is the jargon in the gambling world versus in the health and wellness world. But it's all the same stuff. It's a matter of knowing how to compare the right apples and apples, okay? <laughs> or how to compare the right apples and oranges and still have it come out to be an apple. How do you how do you compare an apple and orange and have it still come out to be an apple? That's the difficult thing. That's the whole thing with the jelly juice is understanding context, 
but also understand that context is no different than everything is, is the same, but you just have different jargon explain the same thing. And that's a difficult concept too to get across. But it's doable if you understand where I'm coming from. But you gotta drink the jilly juice because I'm telling you, if you don't drink the jilly juice, it's gonna be very difficult to understand. But you might get it though. Okay, so um, odds and probability of jilly juice in the human body. Objective probability. See, I was looking at probability and then there's subjective and objective and subjective probability is based upon your experiences, your perception of what pain is, your perception of what symptoms are, your perception of what everything is, and then you create a meaning around that and then you create a reality around that, okay? And that is kind of what my naysayers are doing is their, their subjective uh, probability is based upon the system that already has an outcome of death. And so everything that leads up to the death process, they are they immediately assume that everything that Julie just experiences is going to equal death, and that is their subjective observability. Now we have to look at objective observability. And even though that may seem like the same thing, but now we have a world where you can actually do experiments and 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 create um formulas that have a specific outcome by, you know, and, and create a new, uh, a, a new outcome that doesn't necessarily have to be have, you know, be the same thing as the old outcome. Okay. And so, so objective probability are a more accurate way to determine the probability of a given outcome than subjective probability. That's because a subjective probability is largely based on the human judgment and experiences. Objective probability, on the other hand, allows the observer to gain insight from historical data and then assess the likelihood of a given outcome. So obviously, if you're going to be applying pills, power supplements, and detoxes, and all of your yoga and all those other, other things that you're doing, the chakras and all the, the, the herbs and the extracts and all that stuff, and you're and vegan and vegetarian, the observable probability is that the person's going to die. So no matter what these vegans and vegetarians do and all these different you know, holistic professionals do, the outcome is always going to be death because we've already seen the historical evidence. When you don't vaccinate a child that is weak in our society, they will succumb to the elements because no matter what, if they can't handle the elements in the vaccines, which are basically viruses, bacteria, and minerals, then they will not be able to handle their environment when they come into this world, especially a very aggressive environment such as the West because we have so many people and such diverse backgrounds that a baby that is weak or a human that is weak will not be able to handle that aggressive environment. That's why certain people do not venture outside of their bubble because they cannot handle the aggressiveness in some parts of the city. Why I won't go into some parts of Ohio because I would not be able to handle the aggressive elements that are in that, that area. Because you know there are people that are very highly imbalanced. And so that's when your body will kick in to let you know when you're in danger and when you're not in danger. Okay. So, um, so those are observable like probabilities. You know that if, if somebody doesn't get some kind of transition protocol, they will not be able to handle the environment. And then you see statistically that a place like Liberia that has really no vaccines and no major infrastructure, because they don't, you know, they don't have that kind of uh of us, well, I don't say they're not civilized, but you know, they do have a different environment, different outlook. They have a lot more chaos. They don't have a centralized government too much to really give them law and order. They have the rules of the jungle. They have the rules of pure Darwinism, okay? So then we look at pain plus time plus protocols equals indicator plus indicators, and that's all subjective because just the word pain, people have all their perceptions of pain as well as time, okay, as well as protocols, and as well as indicators. So even those words, pain, time, protocols, and indicators can be very subjective based upon subjective probability. It's basically filtering your perception of the world through all of your imbalances, and then you create a reality around that, okay? So death is observable probability plus time plus indicators. Life is observable probability plus time plus indicators. What are these indicators too that I speak of? Well, you just look at the indicators. What would let you know that it's almost five o'clock? Well, we look at the sun, okay? So there are indicators, but then how do you get five o'clock? Because we have a given agreed um, 
concept that we measure times around the sun, time, you know, you know, and then and then measure that in like days and years and months and minutes and seconds and all of that. So we take it from the macro to the micro. Okay. And that, but if you didn't have all of those concepts already in place, then it would just be like, oh, this big ball of whatever is, is out in the sky and now it's not. And it's more out in the sky during this time than it's not. Okay. But we have a language and we have words, the things to describe our experiences. Okay. So medical science Beginning of life creates more life based upon observable conditions use the law of large numbers in a population. Well, duh. Medical science has given people the opportunity of life that otherwise would not have that opportunity. And that is the vaccine and biotech in third world countries. Okay, and then now it is now creating a centralized type of government and an infrastructure to support the life that we are giving people a chance to have. Okay, and then you look at our society, people who are just so <clears throat> taking their life for granted and recreationalizing reproduction and the act of it. And so they don't really take life very seriously. It's like life is really not that important because it hasn't really, people don't understand the meaning of life because it's been so marginalized and recreationalized in a lot of ways in Western society. We forgot where we came from because we're so in, we're so privileged. And so the only way for you to understand the value of your life is when you actually look at a place like Liberia. So when somebody has the money or the um, intention and the, uh, the generosity to go look at YouTube and see how other people live, even if you can't, can't afford being in there, in those specific areas, like I'm not going to go to Liberia to figure out if Liberia has issues. No, I can watch some YouTube videos and see exactly what, how other people live. I don't have to actually go. I, well, we don't have to let the society fall to understand why we need to have a centralized government and an infrastructure to keep law and order. We shouldn't have to go to that to, to those extremes to prove whether or not our theories are correct. Okay, you don't have to do these horrible drugs to prove how bad they are. You just have to understand the science and the historical data, the observable probability to then determine your your actions and reactions. Okay. Um, then there is the indefinite life probability based upon current psychology and conditions today. This is where I got into the horse racing thing. Now let me, hold on a second. I'm going to, I see some comments here. So let me figure what they are. See less. New comments. Okay. So I want to make sure there wasn't anything else. I don't know what it's for. Okay. It says there's like new comments. Okay. I see. All right. All right, so um, so this whole thing with uh, the horse racing, the probability, and I was looking up true odds versus payout odds, and payout odds are based upon, see, here's the thing, in a, in a house, the house always wins, and there's such a whole science behind casino, and that's why you see Trump making a hell of money on the Trump casinos, or any casinos, they make way more money because the odds are always in their favor because the house always wins. They're the ones that determine the payout on the odds, okay? So, but then I looked at horse racing. I, I didn't really understand horse racing because I'm thinking like, okay, the odds, I'm thinking the odds of something when you gamble is based upon all these different conditions and probability. And what's the probability? How is it observable versus subjective? And I'm like, okay, so when you're, when you're rolling the dice and you're, and you have like four sides or something or six sides to a dice, then, you know, your odds are, uh, what is it? Five to one because you have five chances to, to win one, one number, right? Five rolls. Okay, I get that, but then what determines the payout? Well, they have a whole thing with five to one, you get this much, or what, you know, and there's a whole science behind that, but I'm not getting too much into that because that's a lot. But then I'm looking at the whole horse betting, and the horse betting is totally different, which, you know, I don't, I don't know what told me to look at the horse betting and the payout odds and the horse betting and why the odds are not always set before the race is done. The odds are set based upon the public's betting practices. And I'm like, what the hell? And it's called peri mutual betting. The odds are determined by the betters. No different than when you guys, when, when this, when, when, when they do a whole IPO on a new cure out there, the odds are determined by the better. So the more the public bets on a cure protocol or a horse, the less payout in the life 
minerals, and money. So what's the psychology behind that? Public perception, easy money, easy life. Oh, I got a cure. I, you know, I don't want to actually feel pain and I don't want to actually change my diet, you know, in the beginning to balance out my, my minerals and my biochemistry. So I want somebody to go in and manipulate my genes to then have me not feel pain or have me not feel a symptom. Okay. So the whole thing with the public is how they do it. The, the paramutual betting is that the odds are determined after all the bets are in. So the odds are actually, you can have a 20 to one odds in the beginning, right? Just as, 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 um, before you go in and pick your horse, but it changes at the time of the race. That's what I was like, what? So when someone says, they see the 20 to one and they, they bet on this horse, it's 20 to one. But then at the end of the betting where they close all the bets and the horse and the, and the race starts, then it's three to one. And they're like, what the fuck? How did that happen? Well, it's because it's all the whole pub. It's, it's the, the odds are determined, determined by the betters. Okay, so the more public bets on a cure protocol or horse, so the more popular a cure is based upon the public perception that's about easy, easy money, easy life, easy all this. When you when you when you buy at the height of the market, like oh wow, it's the 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 the, um, the stock is like at fifty, you know, fifty cents a share or fifty cents, fifty fifty thousand dollars a share, and oh my god, I have all this money, I'm going to go invest in all this thing, and it's going to keep rising, and then the bottom falls out. Okay. So then you have a less payout in life and minerals and money because you buy in at the at the top. And so when it's something as popular like, you know, all the cures and biotech and all the holistic stuff, guess what? You get a less payout in minerals, less payout in money because you're you're still riding the same perception of easy easy shortcuts, easy everything. Okay? So, on the other hand, the flip side, the less the public bets on a protocol cure or a horse, the more payout in your life and minerals and money. So the less you actually invest in all these damn holistic remedies and yogas and hot yogas and and cures and gene editing, the more you will have your life. But now I understand at the, you know, this is where then when someone is at imminent death, they may or may not have the 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 minerals in their body to handle the therapies. It's a gamble. And so when someone goes to cannabis or chemotherapy or hot yoga or whatever the hell that they, they go and invest in based upon their thinking they're bad, they're, that they're unhealthy, the more they go in and bet the, they, and they don't know the state of their body, it's a gamble. So you could be doing all this hot yoga and all these immunotherapies and gene editing and chemotherapies and cannabis and not have enough minerals for your body to sustain your situation and all of those things that you did just actually compounded the issue and caused you to be closer to imminent death to where then, yeah, you're in hospice. So there's nothing left for you. There's no other therapies that you can go through. Okay. So the less the public bets on a protocol cure a horse, the more the payout in the life and the minerals and the money, the psychology is public perception is the harder. It is to get the money. The harder it is to obtain life. And that's so true. You see the whole jelly juice protocol. You got to deal with pain. You got to taste something that's really nasty. You got to actually divert your attention from all of your, 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 your social stuff to now directing the attention towards you and your healing process. You got to kind of, you know, do a little bit of a food discrimination in the beginning so you can balance out all of your biochemistry. So it's harder to come by with life because people are looking for the shortcut. So this is all based, so this whole peri mutual betting is emotional betting. When someone sets the conditions already, you see the emotional betting that goes on. And so when, when, when so you, in almost a lot of ways, a house will set the conditions and then they see how the people respond. And then that's where things get, you know, then that's how, that's how the house will always win because the more something is popular, Yes, sir, they're going to make the money. Yes, the insurance companies and the, um, the, the biotech will make the money, but the person that's participating is going to lose. And so, so you see the connections between it all. So when, when, when people are buying the latest shit on the market, right now I just saw something in my group post something about a sauerkraut. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God. It's, it's on Amazon. It's some sauerkraut juice. And I'm like, first of all, they're selling it as a probiotic. So, I mean, it's not just probiotics, but that's how they're selling it. It's a probiotic. You don't know the salt content. You don't, I mean, and it's eleven. It's $12 a bottle to buy it. Holy shit. 
<laughs> and so it's it's and, and it's funny because you know I mean people are trying to trying to make money off this stuff, but when you think about it, it, it it's harder it's harder to make your own and deal with the pain and to understand that it's not always about the money that makes something worthwhile. It's about understanding, understanding what it takes to actually heal and live indefinitely. So that sauerkraut juice that someone posted, my <laughs> I don't know how it tastes. It could taste really nasty. Who knows what else is in it? Like it doesn't even matter because what makes the healing process with the jelly juice, why it's so difficult is the salt contact with which you will then bounce out with water. No brainer. The fact that you have to go through pain because you're getting the micro and macro nutrition and it's healing the weaknesses and you got to drink a lot of it too. When you're buying $12 little power of the ounce bottles and I don't even know what the ounce is, but it doesn't even matter. You're going to get more for your money making your own, more bang for your buck, but then you're also going to have to deal with the healing process. Is that person get waterfalls? And if they, I mean, I, I would imagine that some, maybe that might happen. They could say, you know, potential side effects are, you know, diarrhea and, and this. And if you have any adverse, I mean, I don't know what the, what they wrote on the bottle to give people an idea, but if there isn't anything on the bottle, then I, I wouldn't trust. But anyways, I, that was just kind of a, a crazy thing to me to see out there. Okay. So yeah, there's going to be public perceptions that, you know, the easier it is to come by, the easier life is going to be. And no, the harder life is to come by, the harder it is to, you know, make the money. But once you actually come by it, you will down the road, but it's not going to be, but right now, remember, we're about a very instant gratification society. People don't look beyond like, you know, a day, a week, two weeks, maybe a year. So anyways, um, the probability, the other thing I was talking about, like pain is the indicator of imminent life or imminent death. Okay. And then we talked about like procreation, reproduction, birth, and healing is imminent life, right? And JJ. And then imminent death is mineral, you know, deficiencies or depletion. And then um, vital organs shutting down. That's imminent death. And so even pain, you know, just the word pain can be construed in two different ways of life and death. So now you're looking at now observable probability. And the observable, observable probability is anything that you invest in the holistic allopathic world, no matter what, when it comes to dealing with symptoms. If you already live, like at this point, medical science is able to give people life. And some people can survive the chemotherapy and the cannabis and some of the protocols out there. But here's the thing, when you have so much pain and there's nothing that's relieving it, nothing doesn't matter what it is that's imminent death the observable probability of of pain okay where you can't get any relief that is basically telling you it's imminent imminent death now as far as the jelly juice for imminent life there's i mean there's going to be pain yes for some people who are very 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 horribly off i mean they have they're like 250 pounds they have so many issues yeah, they're going to be in a lot of pain, but now you look at the observable probability of also then chemistry, biochemistry. And then you look at the intention, and then those are all those factors come in. But just to people understand on a more of a superficial bird's eye view sense, imminent life is procreation, reproduction, birthing and healing with the JJ. And then, I don't know, the imminent death is mineral. But see that, I mean, but still, pain is still imminent death. But then what are the factors that contribute to life and death? Is a vital organ shut down? There are, I mean, they do tests. They can tell you if your, your vital organs are, like, really that depleted. Or they put you in hospice. The, diagno the, diagnose, the diagnosis is out there are the major indicators that you're on that path to death. Now, you can always change it at any time. But then it depends on what it is that you're applying to the body, which is why then we have to look at then what is the public investing in? Now you got to look at observable probability that the public is all investing in, like the, the, 
all the different cures. It's like the, the sickle cell anemia cures. You're like, oh, I have a cure for sickle cell anemia. Okay, great. Remember, upset of homeostasis is, will give you a very temporary favorable outcome, but what are the long-term effects when you have spliced off genes and cut things out and done things? Everything is connected. Who knows what system is going to be affected over time down the road? And that has still yet to be determined. So all these cures that are out there haven't been tested over a long period of time. All of them had tested in mice, but then you're going to have these new diseases that maybe you might be able to live through, but then it's a causing then more of a, of a acceleration of the death process. Now you have another issue, another conglomeration of, of diseases, another new vaccine we have to get. I don't know. I mean, this is why we have to understand the probability when at this point in our, in this phase of life in the matrix and the alternative matrix or the mainstream and the alternative mainstream is the more the public bets on a cure and a protocol, or a horse, the less the odds are for the participant. And that is really at this point, because I'm telling you, people don't want to deal with pain. That is our, that's Hippocrates. That is the whole point of our medical system. That is what we teach kids in school. That is what is being put out there. So then the perimutual betting is going to be completely appropriate for this scenario of, um, protocols and what people invest in because you're taught right out of the gate pain is bad you are taught right out of the gate pain is bad and here are the uh, cures and the herbs and the operations and all that stuff to take away the pain but yet pain still keeps coming and then chronic pain is people who are looping no different than the activists that keep looping in the same stuff they have a weakness that's not being resolved and they keep looping. When you have chronic pain, you have a weakness that's not resolved and you keep looping like a broken record until there's nothing left. Because eventually a broken record will stop going. I don't know. I've never, when I've never, you know, tested out how long a broken record can go. It just depends on, you know, how long, you know, you know, if they, if they're, if the light bill, it just depends on if, if, if the bills are being paid automatically and there's a there's an income that's coming through. Let's say you have like what a pension that's from the government and and it actually depends on the life of the person. So if how long can a broke rec broken record be going? Depends on the life of the person. Because that life of the person will determine if the bills get paid to keep that electricity going, to keep that broken record going. <laughs> so it depends on the life of the person. That person can have a very short life to allow the, the, the pension to keep going and to the pension to be put into the, the bank account. And the bank account then has the electric company then draw out the, 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 the money or if a person is alive, they go in and then pay the bill. But do they really want to hear a broken record? But if you're, but if you're dead, then at some point someone's going to notice that you're dead with that broken record to keep going and they're going to let somebody know and then the lights get shut off and the broken record stops <laughs> I guess that's the best way to say at what point does a broken record or an activist looping shuts down. Well, depends on how many minerals you have left. I don't know. Just something to think about, okay, because everything is connected. The stock market to betting and gambling to every single industry with a context and a jargon, it's all freaking connected. And you just have to understand how it works. But you have to get off of your activism, get off of all of your stuff and put time into understanding this information because I'm going to tell you, your life depends upon it. Your freaking life depends upon understanding this information. And if you end applying it, so you can understand this but not apply it. Some of you are understanding this information, love it, but you're not applying it. You think you have all this time until one day you don't. That's what I have more concern about. Some of you who are still out there doing their thing, thinking like, oh yeah, I'll do the J juice when, when some when I get diagnosed. But you know how hard it's gonna be when you get diagnosed to pull yourself out of that plus everything else you've ever had to deal with? It's harder to deal with that. But some of you don't want to give up your current lifestyle. Okay. And your current lifestyle is also, if you're still in the activism, destroying other destroying other people's lifestyles making them closer to death because you know our government all of our governments whether it's the hong kong government 
and the Chinese government is a reflection of the people. Because the government is the people. Yeah, they may have a little bit more resources, access to resources. But if we are continuously procreating on bodies that are highly malfunctioned, you're going to have a malfunctioned government. Why is it that, you know, our society is relatively healthy compared to like North Korea? Well, look at Kim Jong, whatever his name is. He's a big boy. A lot of issues. I mean, Trump is not exactly like the bastion of health either, but he has access to medicines and other things that maybe, you know, Kim Jong, whatever his name is, may not have. Or, you know, the fact that we have a, a better running society as far as um, the Constitution or not destroying everybody and their mother. Okay, so we have a much of a healthier outlook than, you know, North Korea does as well as any other city or country out there that practices, you know, absolute power. Okay, so we have to now start with ourselves to create indefinite life so we're not procreating kids that are obviously imbalanced. And we'll change the, but it's going to take a while. But you have to understand how it all works first. And there, there is no magic pill for something such as change in our society. It is a gradual thing. No different than the jelly juice. There's no automatic cure that you're going to be now looking like now, like what I do now. I couldn't look like what I do now back when I first started the protocol. It was a gradual thing based upon me bringing the juice in and dealing with the healing. And I diverted my attention away from the activists, figured out all the activism and the politics was actually doing me in. And understood that that was all based upon imbalances and not understanding the need for Democrats and Republicans to give you a balancing force, the need for vaccines, the need for biotech in some certain experiences and circumstances. But remember, everything is balanced. You know, you have too much medical intervention, you're going to cause death. Not enough medical, medical intervention will cause death. But then you need a little bit of medical intervention to cause life. And so that's where why you see so much conflict. That's why you see so many things in the holistic world. Like, oh, yeah, coffee's great. Oh, yeah, coffee's bad. Coffee's great. Coffee's bad. And people are like, what the fuck? <laughs> okay. Because based upon your adrenaline, your adrenal glands, you have a very healthy adrenaline system, healthy adrenal, adrenal glands, coffee is perfectly fine. But if you have a very unhealthy adrenal glands and an unhealthy, you know, hormonal fluctuations, then, yeah, anything is going to trigger you to be completely imbalanced. So that's why we don't place any judgment so much on any part of the food supply. But in the beginning with the J juice, we have specific diets. So people understand that they do have imbalances regardless of what they are. And then if you have allergies or any other types of issues or things that you have to do, you do that or avoid that, whatever. And then you still bring in the J juice. Hey, Kevin, <laughs> J and B, who's B? <laughs> Hey, Kevin. Nice to see you, dude. But yeah, so um, so understanding gambling, I mean, I everything is math. Everything is probability. Everything is statistics. Everything is observable probability, subjective probability, you know, true odds, payout, or true odds, and then payout odds, and those are based upon, you know, the house. But um, But no matter what, you know, the horse race betting odds is probably the most appropriate. Oh, Bridget, okay. Is most appropriate when it comes to the J juice. Because that is based upon the uh, the psychology of the betting. And no different than the stock market. When the stock prices are that high, and you try to buy it at the height of the market, you don't know when the, the bottom's gonna fall out. It might happen in like 10 years from now, who knows? But it's a gamble. When you buy at the height of the market, when you buy, when you buy when the initial IPO comes out and everything's all, yeah, that's, you better get in and get out very freaking quickly, but people like to try to hedge their bets or they try to like stay here longer than they should and they stayed longer than they should and the bottom fell out. But then you see the patterns. When you see the patterns of the human biochemistry at some point there's going to be 
recalls. There's going to be, you know, uh, lawsuits against these 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 drugs because of the fact that at some point the body does try to adjust and adapt, and then the pain comes in and side effects, and then they recall the drug. So I guess it's best to go and for just money purposes, not for health purposes, but for money purposes, invest in these IPOs of something like, you know, sickle cell anemia, right? Because there's so many people that have it and they're all in, they're all about the cures, but don't actually invest like you taking those cures because you know the bottom is gonna fall out for you as an actual participant in taking the drug. But a person who sees the psychology of messed up people are gonna go and buy the drug and so you as an investor will probably make a lot more money off of the ignorant people who are going to be buying those drugs. And so then now you understand how biochemistry works. You could actually predict when, when it is to get out of a drug on the market because you start seeing your friends having adverse reactions to these drugs. You start listening to the, the, the reactions of people on the drug. Oh my God, I had to get off of this specific drug because it did this, this, this into me. And I'm like, oh my God. Then you start seeing, then you start seeing the stock price start declining. And then you see people going like, oh my God, now we have a recall on this specific drug. I say, for example, it's Lipitor. Okay. So if you guys know the human body and you know that these drugs are very short lived, they're like a flash in the pan with a limited lifespan. You as an investor, not an investor as taking the drug, but you as an investor into these drugs will know that it's a very short lifespan, but it's a very quick, and you could be a flash in the pan, make a lot of money right at the beginning because you understand the human psychology and people's wanting shortcuts. You can make a shit ton of money off of biotech if you understand the human body and the cures and even the holistic remedies. I mean, look at the whole thing with the Bikram yoga. You know, he, he made a shit, and he's still making money too, but he made a shitload of money off of abusing people and contorting them in such crazy ways. And it's still popular now. Now they call it hot yoga. It's not on the protocol because it really does damage to a person's body over time. But it's a cure, but it's a cure that leads to death and disease no matter what. Because look at Mr. Bikram. He's not exactly a, a you know, a spring chicken. He's, he's, he's aging and degrading. But people want to look cute for that certain amount of time. But you as an investor, as a monetary investor on these specific drugs, not taking the drugs, but because what is it? The drug dealer never takes their own drugs. Don't get high on your supply type of thing, right? It's the same, same concept. If you're going to go and invest in biotech, don't get high on your supply. Don't because you'll be fucked every time. Seriously, excuse my language, sorry. Because these drug dealers know the the psychology of their addicts same thing people who invest in these drugs you have to understand the psychology of the addicts out there that's where you can make your money and it sucks but you have seven billion people so if you want to make money in our study understand the psychology of people and so those that are on the jelly juice will understand the psychology of people we'll make money off of those that are ignorant okay that's how it works don't be ignorant if you don't want someone taking advantage of you if you're an addict you're the one that's being taken advantage of because you're an addict. The drug dealer will keep supplying you the drugs until you pass away. But they know there is that money source right there. Okay? So this is where the people that understand psychology of humans as well as biochemistry and when... So, I mean, you can figure out when, when, you, when, you, when some of you are, are in pain and you're trying to take all these different drugs, how long these drugs last on you. And you look at all the factors that make up who you are and when these drugs stop working. And you can kind of tell how long you stay in on an IPO and a drug and when the fuck, when they get out. So you don't lose your ass. No different than some of these, you know, when you do the, the J juice and you're bringing in, you know, remedies to help you so you can go to work or go to school or whatever. But you get in and get out fast with some of these remedies to help you with the pain mitigation on the diligence protocol because if you do too much, the bottom's gonna fall out. You're gonna go back to the system again. You're gonna undermine any healing ability. So cures and drugs are very, are very, you know, was it, uh, flash in the pan, limited lifespan with the remedies and the cures and all that. But you have to understand everything is connected. 
So this is just even some investment advice based upon just the psychology. And that's the market based upon the psychology of the market. I mean, we didn't lose in the market is based upon psychology. Betting and gambling is based upon the psychology of people. Just even doing the, what is it? The playing poker, you're not betting against the cards, you're betting against the people. Who's bluffing? Who's not? All, I mean, it's, oh my God, it's stressful. <laughs> stressful. It's a lot. Okay. So, um, but this is all like when you're like when you're around for a while, you'll see the patterns. But if you're only around like you know 50, 100 years less than, yeah, you see the patterns, but it's too late. You're you don't have enough minerals in your bank account or in your body to be able to really appreciate and put to use all the knowledge that you have. So this is why the whole Agility protocol is around, so we can actually move beyond just 100 years, and be able to take advantage of the things that we learned. But yeah, when you're recycling life and death, you don't learn shit. And then you have the factors of your parents and then society and your health. Some people don't learn hardly anything in this lifetime. They may learn it the next lifetime if they're lucky enough to come around again. So why not just stay living, understand the patterns of your body and society, and then you'll be that much richer with this knowledge and be able to put to use the knowledge that you've learned. And you'll still have all your marbles and your minerals. Okay. And then you see, then you can get rich off the flux. See, that's how the rich stay rich because they've passed down this knowledge to their offspring. And those that are poor is because they don't have enough minerals in their brain as well as in their body. And they pass down the losing information to their offspring. So people stay stuck in their perspective cast. So the rich stay rich, the poor stay poor because they, it's the information that gets passed on to the offspring. So you want to rise above your station, put more minerals in your body, deal with the pain. If not, then hey, you'll have a more predictable outcome. So don't blame on the rich. They did it right. But they still have their issues. Yes, they're not exactly. But they, at least they, but they keep the money in the family. They create enough offspring to pass it down to the Trumps. No, you know, Trumps have a lot of kids. So that's some generation, new generations of, 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 the, of the information on how this works passed down to their kids. They will stay rich. And then you as a middle class person will stay poor because you haven't figured out how to how to get, rise above your station because you keep buying into the emotional things out there that don't give you the return on your investment. So the diligence is attempting to now rise above all of our stations so we don't end up in a predictable outcome. So, all right, my brain hurts. I'm gonna go do my thing, but hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. All right, bye.